Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Lincoln Lawyer Season 1, Episode 6. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. This was an interesting episode where we got a little insight into... Uh, we got to meet Mickey's dad, and, you know, Mickey, at a young age, got to see his dad get to work. Um, and it was interesting because... We see a lot of who Mickey is, like, uh, was instilled upon him by his dad. Because his dad worked with a lot of, like, rich clients and stuff like that. But the particular case Mickey saw him working on in his flashback was a case that he kind of took, like, for free because he truly believed that his client was innocent. And I even love how that uh, plays a main overarching theme into Mickey's uh, reopening of the Jesus um, case because... For Mickey's dad, it's like, right, no matter who it is, if his clients are guilty, he's still going to give them the best representation that he would any other person. But if they're guilty, he won't feel too bad about it. It's like, okay, I did my best, and they ended up getting found guilty. They were guilty anyway, so I'm not going to lose any sleepover. But the ones that really get him are the ones where it's like, I know this person is innocent, and they're going to be potentially, if I lose, they go to jail for a long time. Someone that's not guilty, someone that's innocent, going to jail for something they didn't do, that's what sits with you, that's what eats away at you, just like this Jesus thing, especially because for Mickey, it's like, right, I, I did what I thought was the best for you at the time, plus everything Mickey was going through at the time, because he ended up visiting Jesus in this episode, and Jesus is like, no man, like, my family believed in you, he's, I think he even said, like, my mom was like, no, no, he's one of us, he speaks Spanish too, so, it's like, we put our faith in you, and you screwed me over, he's like, I don't want to hear your excuses, I don't want to hear, I don't want to be the one that, like, alleviates your guilty conscience, but for Mickey, it's like, right, I wasn't there, I slipped, I slipped up, the fact is that one witness without her, like, I did make you cut that deal, but I'm still trying to find her, so yeah, but Oh, you, so you have to, if you can find her, and if you can get her to testify, maybe then we can, like, mediate my situation, and that's a lot of ifs, but for Mickey, it's like, I need you to trust me that I'm going to do whatever it takes, I have to make this up for you, I'm going to make this right, and talking to Izzy later on, he admits that it wasn't just the pain that really got him into the pills and stuff, it was this, this is what was eating him alive, the guilt over this is what he was really trying to dull, because... The pills helped make him forget about, like, this whole Jesus situation. He buried it for so long, and now, because of uh, Lankford, it ended up rising to the surface. Who knows if Lankford hadn't been a dick about it? Who knows if, uh, whether, whether or not Mickey would have ever, like, voluntarily, like, kind of opened this, um, this metaphorical Pandora's box with this case and, you know, what it means to him. And potentially, this combined with the Trevor Elliott case might... Send him a little spir uh, spiraling a little bit, but we'll see in the long run. There's also, kind of along those same lines about him as a lawyer, it ends up being a, a complicated question he has with Haley. I thought, well, Haley did end up going to school, and I was wondering, so at first I was like, okay, does this have any correlation to do with, like, oh, uh, Mickey and Maggie, what she saw, but it's like, well, there's some parts of that, but it's mainly about what she saw in her mom's job, because it's like, right, Mom's witness got killed, but would you represent a guy like that? He's kind of like, no, but she's like, he's like, I represent all kinds of people. Everyone has a right to a, uh, you know, um, uh, an equal representation. But then she's like, yes, but would you represent? And he's like, because she's like, do you have any lines? And he's like, yes, I do have lines. Like, I won't uh, work with anyone that hurts kids. And she's like, yeah, that's good, I guess. Like, the fact is that her father doesn't have steeper lanes because it's like, right, there's so many other terrible people you would work with. It's kind of the thing. So, and I guess that's also a byproduct of Mickey's dad being like, right, everyone deserves the best defense possible. If they're guilty, he won't feel too bad about it, but he's still going to do his best. But it's also that thing of like, right, you don't have to take on a client you do, because that, that's a part of this, because I don't think Mickey wanted to admit that the Trevor Elliott case is also meant to put his name back on the map. Like, there is that self-indulgent angle to this, that, that I'm getting something out of this, too. It's like, you know, I need this to kind of put my, my star back on the rise again. So he didn't really want to, I think, bring that up and just because it kind of makes it a like it's already bad enough it's like oh you're representing a guy who potentially murdered his wife and her lover but then also you know because also she looks at him a certain way because it's like right he's a rich and powerful person like why don't you represent the people who aren't rich and powerful guy because she you know much like the jury that you know he was so worried about last episode a lot of people have their a lot of people publicly have their opinions of like you know not just you know in this case but even just like in real life too of like oh 
you rich privileged asshole. That's 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 always going to be in the forefront of people's minds, especially like oh when you do something terrible. It's like oh yeah, like rich people being believing they can do whatever they want to and get away with that mentality is going to you know um, really resonate in their um, heads, and I think it kind of re uh, resonates here in Haley's head. But um, the fact is, Mickey wasn't giving her the answer she wanted. She wanted him to have a clear lines of like, yeah, like if I believe someone's guilty of something, I'm never going to take the case. Her dad never said that. He will take cases even if it's someone he does believe is guilty. Because probably he could get a pretty good rough reading from the beginning to be like, I mean, sure, it's probably, well, because I don't think you can real. I mean, I think you, you can drop a client um, in the middle of the case, uh, you know, I mean, I think you'll be screwing that person over, but you could. So I guess she's almost like, oh, you must have some inkling. You'll look into the case and decide whether or not that person is guilty or innocent from the beginning. And then, you know, decide whether or not to take the case. But it's like, right, you're going to take deplorable cases because it's like, cool. The guy that shot mom's witness, you know, because I think there's also that angle of, well, that's someone who did something terrible. You're going to represent them. But it's also a little close on because like it's mom, your mom's witness and Maggie could easily be a target. She isn't really going down that route of like that thought process. But I feel like that thought could be potentially around the corner for Haley. But maybe, maybe not. Another angle to this episode is that Mickey uh, meets with Tanya and... Once again, and I like he's like, right, I'm not representing the prosecutors and whatever their deal is with what, what, going after Soto. My thing is, I'm here for your best interest. So whatever you need, I represent you. I don't care what they need. So, yes, I'll help them out. But you are my client. You're the person I'm looking after first. So he's trying to hook her up with, you know. Um, witness protection, make sure that she's away from Soto, because she's like, I'm not gonna, like, she's like, I don't even love him, but he bought me an apartment, he gave me money, like, she was, you know, struggling, and now she has this baby on the way, a daughter as well, um, you know, obviously Mickey connects with her on that, and it is a situation of Mickey wants to help her, and the moment he found out, like, oh, Maggie kind of pushed that car, he's a little forgiving, because he's like, right, he knows who his, who his ex is, how um, she pushes that envelope like that, and even kind of calls her out about it later on, and like, oh, it's kind of messed up, you know, threatening her baby, and it's like, right, I need you to make a deal that she'll get witness protection for, like, uh, a year, and, and enough money to keep her afloat for about a year, uh, a minimum. And it's like the only person who could do that is Maggie's boss, Janelle, which Janelle only wants to go as far as two months. But for Mickey, it's like, no, she needs the full year. Like, you, what would you do? You you recommended her to me because you thought I'd bow down easily and you can get what you want. He's like, just please do this for me. He's trying to do right by her because, you know, uh, she's just trying to make do. She's an immigrant. She's just trying to make do. And, uh start over with her family like can we help her out so mickey's really pushing for that and i think you know maybe his own you know personal story is also an influence in that of like you know i mean i think he's just sympathetic as you know you know uh you know as a parent himself that it's like right did he do anything for Haley, and he realizes that tanya's trying to do the same thing for her, her daughter as well so so Maggie is going to push Janelle into kind of pushing further because they there's that whole fundraiser situation which I love. Uh, Golance was there, kind of get inside of Mickey's head. It's like, oh yeah, like I know your your wife's little um, tells about like, oh yeah, she like does this thing when she's nervous, and you know even Mickey's asking later on, it's like, oh did you guys date? She'd be like, no, it was just we were super professional. We went out for drinks. It's like, did, well you can't even see. Um, when you're getting played by the prosecutor. But part of me was almost wondering, like, at the end, I was like, when she was just standing there waiting for her Uber, I was like, is Golance actually going to show up? And she's kind of hiding the fact that they are kind of a thing. But it turns out, no. In fact, Bob shows up, the uh, Janelle's opponent, which obviously last episode, he came out swinging with his ad. She came out swinging with hers this time. So... And he's actually trying to offer her a job because he's like, right, come work for me, like work under my wood. Like you want to make sure I'm um, the district attorney because I'm actually going to look out for people. Janelle, she's just lining her pockets until she can uh, lining up her next job. She doesn't care who she leaves in her wake. So it's like, right. But both of you seem like. I mean, the way Janelle's approaching, you're kind of like, I don't like the way you're kind of going about things. But, Bob, you also kind of seem a little slimy yourself. So. Mickey, I mean, uh, Maggie said that she has no intentions of running for DA, but I'm like, 
that you might have no choice because they might need a third option. I mean, maybe not right now, but maybe in the future, she'll see the way things are. And it's like, right, this is how I get done to get things done, especially when your boss is willing to try and drop this soda. Okay, so you got to make things happen fast or this is all going to go up and smoke and a terrible person like Soto is going to be able to walk away. You also have Cisco finding out about uh, the whole, was it, hard case Casey uh, that Mickey's taking him on as a client. And then he finds out, like, whoa, Teddy, like, you talk to Teddy, he's like, well, you found Teddy. He's like, well, he more so found me. And obviously, once again, uh, some of Cisco's past is coming back to haunt him. The moment, like, that was all kind of brought up, Lorna was like, are you okay? He's like, yeah, yeah, it was in my past. It, it's, you know, it, it doesn't bother me, but you're like, it does. Because it's hitting a little too close for home. Because I think he thought, like, oh, it's finally free of them. And now you add in a layer of, like, oh, they're back. And even Mickey's like, right, they were clients for years. So I guess they have this relationship. Once again, I don't know whether Mickey did something. He did something for, Teddy did something for Mickey. And now Mickey owes him forever, um, forever be their lawyer on payroll, kind of like a, almost not to that extent, but kind of a, a Saul Goodman, uh, Breaking Bad slash um, Better Call Saul. Like, I don't know if if it's supposed to be kind of something similar to that not necessarily like, oh, you are a dirty, but you are our, our lawyer on call. Um, like what went down to the point that Mickey was like, yeah, I am, a, you know, as he told Jesus, oh, I'm a man of my word. So he made a promise to them. Uh, once again, I don't think there's any correlation. But previously, I was like, maybe it has something to do with Cisco getting away from them. But now it seems like maybe that's something else entirely. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Griggs brings up the... Uh, well, because... Uh, did they run into each other this episode, too? I think they did. The conversation shifts about the... Um, the bribe again, and it's like, right, no, he was talking to Legal, and saying that Legal, uh, who's played by the actor who plays, uh, the thing I'm best known for is Ezra in, uh, well, the present day, um, e uh, Legal is played by the actor who plays Ezra and um, Ray Donovan, that's the thing I'm best known for, um, I didn't even bring it up earlier, but the actor who plays Mickey's dad, Mickey Sr., I know him. it's a short-lived show he did on TNT called King of Maxwell. That's always the thing I kind of tend to associate with him. But hes I think he, he's one of those actors like, oh, I probably have seen you in more things. But that's just always the first thing that comes to mind. Right, circling back to the point I was making. Uh, basically, there's three people that the money could have gone to. A juror, um, God, someone else. And the judge. And it's like the other two are off the mark just because it's like, right, the jury was just decided. So that couldn't have been like, there's no way um, Jerry could have like set that up in that well in advance. So uh, initially they're thinking it's a judge, in particular Judge Stanton, because he, his husband ended up opening a restaurant and the restaurant kind of closed. But then two months ago it opened up. So it seemed like it might be him but Cisco and Lorna look into it and it turns out no all the money's legit it was like from a family trust thing so they don't have to worry about that but I love the reveal when um uh, Haley actually gave uh actually gave Mickey the idea because she was like man if I was that Trevor guy like why does it like you know should you be focusing on Jesus's case now instead of this Trevor Elliott guy's case like if I was that Trevor Elliott guy who wants his day in court sure I'd put that off forever and even Mickey had to go like why is he so what why he's so so full speed full steam ahead like why does he want this happening so fast and something clicks in Mickey because Mickey had talked to Sonia Laura's friend earlier trying to find out if there were any other suspects they lost touch Laura's trying to make it seem like it's because Trevor was controlling and um but then Trevor's like oh like she's might not like me but she still cut off her right arm to like work at my company and such um that that's kind of part of the reason why Laura and her potentially had a falling out was just over stuff kind of like that or something. Uh, but then he's also talking to Trevor. He's like, oh, like what happened to that 100000 He's like, oh, yeah, right. Now that I think about it, it's like, yeah, he might have been trying to make some simulation or something reenact. And Mickey's like, I know you're lying to me because uh, I think he had suggested it. Um, and then... Um, then Trevor was like, oh, yeah, 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 that had to be the thing. Or what? Like, he was lying out his ass, and Mickey could easily tell him, well, that's what irked his nerves. He's like, I can tell people are lying to me. Once again, the last thing you need is your client to lie to you, because when they lie to you, it blindsides you. But now we get a lot into this, where it's like, okay, I see what happened here, uh, Trevor. 
you, the bribe, that 100000 went towards a jury member. The jury member, uh, seven. It's like, that's why you wanted to make, that's why you made such a point of you wanted to have insight into the jury. I was like, now that makes so much sense. I was like, that made no sense because you're like torpedo, torpedoing your own case because you need to just leave it to Mickey. He knows what's what. And even now, it's like, oh, that jury you're trying to scare off? You did that on purpose so that... Uh, a replacement would come in and such, you know, that you planned this all out. This was, so it turns out, he's like, I had no idea what the fix was in. He was like, Jerry kind of did this on his own. Like, Jerry's the one that set this all up. So he didn't know the juror and stuff like that. Um, so I guess prior, he didn't know until like, until the uh, courtroom situation. But Jerry set that all up. And also, uh, he points out the fact is that the money, that 100000 plus all the money he has in his company and such, it's not from like, oh, like more reputable sources. It's from a very scary dude who had, like, what oil, owns one of the biggest oil companies um, in Russia. It's more so his son that I think he does business or at the very least he's tight with the son and that ended up leading him to doing business with the father. Either way... Um, that's why he needs this cell to go through. It's not just on him. He's against the wire because the moment, if he goes to jail, the cell can't go, the acquisition can't go through. And that guy needs the acquisition to go through. So it's like, if things kind of go sideways, that guy, and if I talk, that guy will kill me. And Mickey, he will kill you and your entire family too. This is not the guy you want to mess with. So it turns out he's the main one behind this. He's, Elliot, uh, Trevor suggesting, because he was ignoring Laura, Laura wanted a divorce, and if Laura got a divorce, and there's, because there's no prenup, she would have gotten half of it, half of which, half of them, not just half, all of that money is not Trevor's, and half that money is still half that guy's money, so it's like, yeah, so that's potentially why Laura and uh, Jan got killed. At least that's what Trevor's putting out right now. Maybe we'll find out later on. Once again, it's a lot. Guy's been a liar all the time, but he's also still saying like, no, no. But the main thing is still true. I didn't kill anyone. That's still so true. You got to believe me, which Mickey does. He's like, right. At the very least, you're not guilty of what they say that you, what they believe you to be guilty of. But it's still a whole lot of maneuvering they're going to have to do because this complicates things so much more um, about what was up. Well, because... <clears throat> Because the other two people who are... Well, now it makes sense why Jerry died. Probably because he did want a continuance and stuff. And that would have uh, screwed this whole thing up. So that's even more so why... Um, Trevor is pushing for um, things going down now. So now it adds, like I said, adds layers to like... Right, it's not just a trial you're trying to handle now you've got like this hanging guillotine on the back of your head now it's like right they bugged me but it's like well they're bugging you is the mildest thing they can do because these are the type of people that will once again kill you and your entire family so it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all of that ends up taking us going forward into the next episode but really that's all i'm going to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe live life to the fullest and enjoy it Good day and goodbye.